LPC, LPCC, IMFT, LISW, PhD. If you don't know what any of those are, go ahead and hit the 30 second fast forward button and enjoy the podcast. But if you know someone or happen to have those credentials, then Emerge might be your next career path. If you're seeking to join a team that provides authentic Christian counseling and utilizes advanced modalities, then apply today at emerge.org forward slash careers and join us in the battle to help people find freedom and rest. Welcome to the XM Podcast. Here is your host, mental health therapist, Matthew Kanebi. I am very hard on myself, dealt with severe anxiety. And it made me feel like a monster. I didn't have the energy to care. There was just nothing more but to face what I had been running from. I'm already an anxiety-filled mess. It's just love. Like, it just goes back to love. So as we were recording this podcast, it reminded me of a story that I share in counseling all the time. And um, it reminded me of uh, how a lobster grows. And if you don't know, this is how it works. The lobster knows to grow when it feels the squeeze of the exoskeleton around it. He feels the stress and pressure of its outside world kind of coming in on him and reminding him, hey, it's time to burrow underneath the ocean floor, grow, regrow the protective outer shell, and then move along. And you may ask yourself, why am I talking about this? Well, because we all experience the squeeze every once in a while. We experience the adversities and the difficulties of life, but it reminds us that's the time to grow. And so we are going to discuss today the squeeze in leadership. And to do that, the president and CEO of Emerge Counseling Ministries is here to have that conversation with me. Please welcome to the show my friend, Dr. Robert Crosby. Really good to be with you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, man. It's good to be doing these in person. I do so many of these on Zoom, so it's, <laughs> it's nice to actually be in in the room with somebody having a conversation. Yeah, we don't we don't want to refer to the days of COVID and right. having to you know do all this technical connecting. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, um, talk to us a little bit about just some things that have been going on with you, some things that you and Pamela have been doing, and yeah. get us kind of up to date with with the Crosbys and, and things that are going on at Emerge. Sure. Well, it's uh, a really exciting time for Emerge. You know, Emerge is in its 51st year of ministry. So in some ways, we're looking at it, you know, as the, the scripture says, the Lord's mercies are new every morning. So we feel like we're in a new season of his mercy. And uh, <clears throat> there there's so many people in need around us, leaders, pastors, you know, people in our local community, people in uh, other parts of the U.S. So emerges in a season, I believe, of uh, taking some new steps, uh, just uh, areas of opportunity and ministry that we're moving into. But for me and Pamela, uh, we're able to travel periodically. We do a good bit of ministry with leaders around the country. Uh, you know, Emerge has a local component to what we do, uh, a regional that impacts Ohio, Pennsylvania. But for 50 years, we've had a national you know, opportunity, uh, ministering to people that are a part of all types of churches. Uh, we are, for example, considered the premier ministry partner of the Assemblies of God. And they're a part of the, the groups that we minister to, but we serve people from so many different church backgrounds. And that's a that's a privilege. When uh, when Pamela and I came to Emerge in 2019, you know, we knew Emerge was about three or four years away from turning 50. We had just spent the previous 12 years working with millennials and Gen Z, really in university ministry, and then we'd had a number of years of pastoral ministry. We didn't know that we were one year away from a pandemic. Right. You know, we knew people needed counseling. We didn't know how much people were going to need it. And, uh, you know, we like to say that whatever stigma there was with counseling, yeah. 
it was pretty much blown away. And uh, and now, you know, as we travel, one of the joys, and it happened again in Tennessee last week, we had people come up to us and say, you don't know it, but I have an eMERGE story. Yeah. There was a point in my life, uh, you know, one person told me a couple of years ago mm-hmm. that I came to eMERGE and uh, really received significant help. That's good. So I want to kind of get into our topic today. You've been doing some traveling. You've been kind of talking around this. And I think it's something that is going to be really exciting for our listeners to kind of hear about. Uh, The topic is the leadership squeeze, navigating the middle earth of ministry. That's a great title. (laughs) Let's unpack that a little bit. What, what, What does that mean? You know, whoever is listening today, you know, whether a parent, uh, a young person, you know, someone in college, someone who leads a business or somebody who works in a church, whoever it is, we all all relate to the dynamic of life putting the squeeze on us. Uh, And we feel it, you know, uh, emerge every now and then we give out these stress balls and, you know, we give them to people so that they can hold them and something to kind of squeeze when they're feeling the pressure. People will have it on their desk. But the truth is mentally, soulfully, we feel it. We all know what it's like to hit moments where we just feel overwhelmed. Uh, the pressures of life, competing demands, leaders feel it, ministers feel it. We saw during uh, COVID and since COVID, so much despair and, and discouragement among many leaders. And so the topic of the leadership squeeze is, you know, it's a reality. It's uh, for many people a daily experience. And then the idea of the Middle Earth ministry, of course, some Tolkien-esque language. Right, right. But, um, but really how leadership has to do not so much with the beginning or the end. That is a part of it. But the daily of it is the middle, is the in between. And we'll we'll talk more about that. That's good. Um, so maybe we can just kind of um, address, you know, some of the things um, that a lot of people are experiencing right now. Uh, life has always been hard. You can go to the yeah. Old Testament and, and see that. You can see that in the New Testament. Yes. But I feel like maybe people are feeling a different type of pressure mm-hmm. over the last four or five years. Uh, talk about that in terms of um, the world today, and why do you think that is so uh, proving itself to be true? Mm-hmm. You remember the uh, the book and the movie, The Perfect Storm. Sure. Pamela and I lived and pastored in New England in the Boston area right around that time, and that occurred right off the coast of Gloucester, uh, Massachusetts. And uh, it was a a time when these boats were out at sea fishing and a trifecta of storms all converged in one area. And it was, you know, the the perfect storm. And it feels like that the last several years, the last handful of years in the U.S. and all over the world. uh, We've we've had a pandemic. This is, you know, for most of us, you know, people my age or age, this is a is, you know, the, the type of thing we've never experienced before. And right. you could tell even with our government, it was new to them. How do we deal with it? What do we do? So for people that affected them in so many ways, children, parents trying to give their get their children educated at home, so many different things. But since then, we've, we've uh, had uh, dynamics like the loneliness epidemic, mm-hmm. where the Surgeon General, a couple of years ago, wrote a document that said there is an epidemic of loneliness in the United States, and it is playing out with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, suicidality. We're seeing these types of things. The other part is we live, and of course, we we go in and out of these politically tense seasons where there are dynamics that divide families, neighbors, people groups. We live with those. And, And then, you know, we used to be told, 25, 30 years ago, when the computer age comes, we're going to be able to go down to like a three-day work week, you know? But what we didn't factor is the more we're able to do, the more we're able to make, the the higher we build our lifestyle, and the more we have to keep up with. And then I think to add to it, Matt, the information oversaturation, the fear of missing something. And there's a lot. The... the, um, 
you know, one of the dynamics that I talk about that I believe is impacting a lot of us, you and I are sitting in a studio doing this interview and I, I, you're about, you know, six feet away from me. I can see you. You can see me. But much of our lives, we have like a piece of glass between us. And so the whole dynamic of human interaction that has neurological effects, personal effects, psychological effects, all these are kind of converging into a perfect storm. And we feel it. We feel the squeeze. So, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. I think um, I think a lot of people are feeling that. Uh, I think you and I certainly are in, in the worlds that we yes. live in at, at Emerge. W- what are some of the things that you would say um, to somebody listening that, wh- what do we do with that? You know, uh, how, how do we handle these types of stressors? Because mm-hmm. for the most part, you know, a lot of these things aren't going away quickly. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're still dealing with remnants of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, sure. the, the work environment has changed. Yes. Um, the, the idea of loneliness, I think is, uh, very accurate in the sense that, you know, uh, I, I, th- I, th- I, I said this before, but I think it's interesting you know, years ago, years ago when I was a kid, the drive through happen. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> we're even speeding up the process of, of getting food, which uh, a meal is something I think we're supposed to share and uh, be yeah. together and be in community. Now you've got these services that you don't even have to leave your home anymore. Right. It's like it, it's everything in our culture is moving more and more to isolation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It really is. Yeah, it really is. You know, a couple of thoughts related to it. One of the ways to deal with it. And, you know, none of us have this all figured out. We're learning and growing. But believe it or not, I would say I would partly start with your daily to-do list. Most of us have some way we keep some kind of to-do list, maybe mentally. If you're like me, you have to keep it somewhere. I used to use a Word document and I would erase things as I got them done. Uh, the last few years, I use, you know, uh, I, I use a function on my iPhone, just a list, and I move things around. I minus them out when I've done them. But, you know, we put what is important on there. Uh, complete that work project. Uh, clean the basement, you know, uh, take the kids to sports, uh, pick up groceries, all these things. But let me ask you this on your to do list, how much do you have on there that is related to your soul mm-hmm. and to your mental? health is that a priority where does it fit uh you know one of my favorite psychologists even though he wasn't called that was uh augustine or saint augustine because he wrote so much about the soul and he wrote his book confessions being honest and in it he said lord my soul is your house but it's too small I need you to grow it. And I think in a world where so many other things have become very big in our lives, our list, our duties, our responsibilities, our pressures, often we've made a little room for our soul. That's good. Uh, So as you're traveling, because you you, you were in Texas not long ago, I think Mm -hmm. you were in Arizona, right Mm -hmm. right after that, you were in, in Tennessee, you're working with a lot of leaders, you're working with couples, parents, pastors across the country. Um, and something that you call the leadership squeeze, what is, what, what is that specifically and how does it relate to mental health? We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Gary Underwood here from Emerge Counseling Ministries. Thank you so much for listening to our XM podcast. Hope you find it to be an incredible practical resource and encouragement to you in your own mental health journey and relationships. Here at Emerge, it is our heart to help people in crisis, whether trauma, grief, addiction, anxiety, depression, no matter what, Emerge seeks to help those in times of great need. So would you be willing to partner with us in helping people who are facing a crisis? A one-time gift of at least $50 to our Emerge fund at emerge.org forward slash give will go to help the next child, the next parent, the next family to get the biblical counseling and support they need without adding to financial burdens. Thank you so much for listening, sharing our podcast with your friends, and hopefully taking this next step of helping Emerge help people find wholeness and healing in their lives. If you're ready to help, please jump in with us at emerge.org forward slash give and make your one-time gift today. You know, when it comes to the leadership squeeze, this is what I see it as I I believe in our world today, we often have a misconception of leadership. And even within the church world, often we've allowed the business world 
to primarily inform our view of leadership. But I believe it would be helpful to us to take a look at Scripture and how does the Scripture present leadership? How did Jesus present it? How does the Apostle Paul present it? So the idea of the leadership squeeze is this. We tend to believe that when we're the leader, we're over people and that that's the main thing. And I believe, yes, when you're a leader, you're responsible to have oversight of people, a parent over children, uh, you know, a CEO over people in an organization, a teacher over students. Yes. But that isn't the most challenging and significant part of the role of a leader. It's being with people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the biblical example I look to is Moses. Moses brought people out of a place of bondage and led them to a place of promise, which he never got to fully take them into. But much of his life was being in the wilderness with people. But while they walked through the wilderness, keeping the promised land alive in their souls, Mm. in their minds, in their spirits. And that's the challenge of a leader. You know, when you have a, a child who's discouraged and they're crying at night, you're trying to keep hope alive inside of them. And it's the same way with any of us in leadership. So the real challenge of being a leader, and I tell pastors and business leaders and other people this, your biggest task is not being over people. That's the easy part, Mm -hmm. you know, calling the shots. But the, the real challenge is being with people and keeping them focused, joyful, Mm -hmm. (laughs) encouraged, uh, as they move forward. And and that's part of where we feel the squeeze. So some of it we put on ourselves because we misinterpret what leadership is supposed to be. And, it's, and it really relates to, uh, to our expectations. Yeah. And so with that, I think, what, what are some of the, the privileges you see happening with that being put into a place of leadership? Because <clears throat> certainly... It's happened through throughout history, but I would say there's been a, a plethora of leaders we've seen over the last couple of years fall. Yeah. So uh, I do think that there is a privilege to be brought mm-hmm. into leadership, but there's mm-hmm. also an accountability. Yes. What What are some of your thoughts around that? So, oh, the, uh, the privilege is continuing to be amazed that the Lord would entrust whatever he's entrusted to you and me. And, you know, I remember when I was, uh, when I first was a lead pastor at a church in New England years ago, and we put on this event called the Leadership Launching Pad. You know, and we had all these grandiose hopes of just getting so many people launched in leadership. And I remember one of my board members came to me and said, you know, pastor, he said, I don't know that I'm a leader. Maybe I, I don't know that I should be at this. And I said to myself, well, you know, in many ways, all of us have some leadership duties, but I hear what he said. We, we, the Bible talks a lot about following, being a disciple. We sometimes talk much more about being a leader. But if you put 100 people in a room and said, all of you are the leaders, you're going to be banging heads against one another. And you know, right. the Apostle Paul, what I love, he, he did not say a lot about leadership. But one thing he did say is follow me as I follow Christ. So, so I like to say he led the following way. Mm. So one of your major examples as a leader is for people to see how you work with those that you're accountable to. And, and in one sense, even though we have leadership opportunities, we have a measure of accountability to one another. But there is this squeeze that people feel. And some of it, I believe, Matt, is related, related to what I would call burdens of leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one of those is Moses said, Lord, why have you given me the burden of all this people? He said in Numbers uh, eleven eleven. Another is the burden of loneliness. You, we've all heard of the lonely wine of the top dog, mm. that you can be in a key role of leadership around a lot of people, but you can become very lonely. And that can be a part of the leadership squeeze. Uh, how about how about accumulated grievances? Mm-hmm. Have we experienced that before? Accumulated sure. grievances, you know. And the other is in the world of uh, social media, Instagram, so much knowledge available is the burden of comparison. You know, you go to a yeah. conference. I talk to a statewide church leader 
uh, last year. And I said, when you go to this conference with all these other leaders, how do you feel? He said, honestly, sometimes I go and I think, I bet I have the most messed up church in this whole room. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I thought, can, can I share that when I do talks? He said, absolutely. And yeah. sometimes we, we put the squeeze on ourselves by comparing ourselves to others. Yeah. Well, you've, you've mentioned Moses. Uh, are there other areas of scripture where we see this type of leadership squeeze so that if somebody's listening and, and trying to kind of uh, relate or connect, like where, where are some of the other places in scripture that you would say this kind of shows up and, and, and who would you, you know, use as an example? You know, one, of course, we talked about Moses, you know, in the Old Testament, but I would talk about Paul in the New Testament. You know, when you read First Corinthians, First Corinthians is like the confessions of a leader that's feeling the leadership squeeze. Yeah. You know, he, he said, you're comparing me to Apollos and to all these other leaders. He's having to give his resume very awkwardly. Again, you can tell, uh, trying to remind them of who he was, feeling the pressure of poor decisions that had been made by the leaders there while he was away. But, but here's... Here's the heart of it. There's a verse that I love, Galatians 4.19. Paul said, I continue to go through the pains of childbirth Mm -hmm. until Christ is formed in you. So that tells you the heart that he had for the people. You know, you may be a leader and you have real hopes for somebody you're leading. And maybe your hopes seem to be higher than theirs. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a parent. You feel real high hopes for your kid, but you you see them compromising. Another is... uh, Paul, Paul said, um, you know, when he was, uh, when, when he was at uh, Corinth, he talked about how I carry around in my body all, all the time the death of our Lord Jesus. So there are, there are uh, joys and new life in leadership, new things, new opportunities, but there are also things that are difficult. You know, uh, one person told me leaders are responsible to watch over takeoffs and landings, uh, helping things begin, but then also sometimes bringing things to an end. And I think Paul felt that in in his care for uh, churches and yeah. leaders. I don't think there's probably a better example in Scripture than, than Paul uh, feeling yeah. that type of thing. So I'm going to turn the tables a little bit on you. Yeah. You're a CEO. Yeah. You're a president of Emerge. Mm-hmm. You've led in a lot of different capacities. How do you feel? that type of squeeze? How how do you personally experience that? Are you going to turn this into a counseling session? (laughs) (laughs) How how do you feel about that? How do you feel? How are you feeling? (laughs) Yes. Yes. And you know, and all all kidding aside, the, uh, the role of leading any organization and, you know, uh, I I will feel it in my role, you and yours, other team members on our leadership team and other teams and other churches, uh, they're incredible blessings to be able to lead. You know, mm-hmm. the joy of of encouraging people, the joy of being able to have uh, the access to resources that we can bless other people locally and around the world. Hardly a day goes by. I don't have someone that reaches out with a need. You do as well. Could you help me? Could you connect me with someone that could help me? Yeah. That's a joy. That is a privilege. The the uh, the challenge, and I. I think every honest parent, every honest leader would probably say this, is sometimes wanting more for people than sometimes they may want for themselves. Or sometimes seeing more in someone than they see for themselves. And there's that critical balance of challenging people that you lead, but not over challenging them. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other differentiation, Sometimes we believe that people see everything the way we do through our lens, you know, and to me, and I believe this is true, and I'm trying to learn this better. Listening is loving. Yeah. Listening is loving. But we live in an age when many people care more about giving their opinion than listening and yeah. really listening. I, there are times, you know, my wife, Pamela, will say, did you hear what I just said? And I'll, yeah. I'll re- regurgitate to her what she said. Yep, yeah, she said, you heard me. You really didn't listen. Yeah. So, you know, those moments of really hearing. So, yeah, I I believe some of those are it. And then being patient with the process that God has ordained. There's a, a verse in Romans 12. We, we talk about it a good bit at Emerge. 
And it's this in the message version, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Yeah. As a leader, sometimes I want to embrace what I'd like him to do for me yeah. or what I hope he'll do for Emerge. You know, we have a lot of vision, a lot of dreams that Emerge. And we often talk about how sometimes we feel like we have more vision than we yet see the provision. Yeah. And so I think those are some of the squeeze yeah, issues. I, I think a lot of people can uh, relate to that. And, and you and I've talked about this quite a bit that, you know, you've talked to and I've worked with a lot of pastors over the last couple of years. And mm-hmm. That, that squeeze of going, I'm leading um, a church, I'm, I'm leading the, the, the body, and I have to make tough decisions, and I know that whatever decision I make, there's going to be a population of people that aren't yes. in alignment with that. Yes. And that's a heavy responsibility. I mean, you and I felt mm-hmm. that on a lot of levels oh, with yeah. some of the decisions we've had to make, knowing you know, we want to make the best decisions. We want to lead well. Yes. Um, we want to... Um, be in line with um, God's uh, mm. uh, uh, vision for our ministry and pastors. Yes. But in the same time, you know, when when I roll this out, mm-hmm. there's going to be a big part of our organization, ministry, nonprofit, whatever it may be, that's going to be at odds with that. And that yes. that's probably been more pertinent and current than uh, any other time in my life. Yes. You know... You're right. The The term used to be called shade tree mechanics. Mm. And what that term meant is, you know, it's like, it's like Monday morning quarterbacks, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's having all this info and believing that we know what is best. And let me maybe save some leaders and pastors some grief. And let me speak to the listener. If you're here and you're a part of a church, you're a part of a family, you're a part of an organization, you're part of a business or a ministry, and your leader or your leaders frustrate you. The decisions they're making frustrate you. Be careful to separate between what is good and bad and what is your view versus their view. Because, you know, having been a uh, in many different roles in the local church and in a university, uh, you know, vice president, professor, youth pastor, assistant pastor, lead, all those things. One thing I began to realize years ago is until you sit in that seat of leadership, you don't get to see all the pieces that go into those right. decisions. So, so trust your leadership unless they have blatantly given you some reason not to trust them or morally given you some reason not to trust them. Trust them and not only trust them, pray for them because they're in places where, you know, the, the scripture says strike the shepherd or strike the leader and the sheep scatter. Yeah. At Emerge, one of the things that we love and it motivates a lot of what we do is bless the pastor, bless the leaders, and the church will flourish. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there, th- that's important. And you're right. Uh, in an age of so much knowledge and so many opinions, you know, online, it's really easy to criticize and to be a part of a problem instead of a part of, of the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you and I have seen that it emerge over the past uh, several years. I've worked with more pastors that have come and said, you know, I'm... I, I think I'm leaving the ministry and, and that breaks my heart. And it's because of the overwhelming stress of going, no matter what I do, I, I, I can't, I can't make everybody happy type situations. And, and the thing is, is I don't really think that's the, that, that shouldn't be, be the goal, you know? And I, the other thing is, and this may open up a can of worms, but um, mm-hmm. I think sometimes, and, and this is really a message to culture, we don't have to agree on everything. You know, something no. something shifted where like you and I can be in relationship and, and there might be things that we don't agree upon, yet I, I still love you. I still right. appreciate you as a friend. Right. But we're 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 moving into a place where if you don't agree with a one hundred percent of what I say, mm-hmm. then you are now my enemy. Right. And that's not healthy and, and, and I think that's causing a lot of division. Yeah. Not only in culture, but in our churches and in, in other arenas. Um It really is. Yeah. It really and you know, uh as you talk about a mad polarization. You know, where we're polarized and we're we, and we're denying the middle earth of life. Much of life is living in the middle earth with people, living the in the in-between 
periods uh, to where, yeah, we're not going to agree on everything, but we're going to major on the majors. And we're, if we focus on the things we agree on, uh, then we can build a relationship and it's able to grow. Um, so, so I like to look at it this way. I believe the skill of the AH is collaboration, not just being able to work well, but to work well with other people. And, you know, when, uh, when Paul said, uh, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, that sounds like, ah, that sounds wonderful. The unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, that sounds idyllic. There are days when the ad is a joy. That's like patting somebody on the back, affirming them in front of somebody else. But there are days when keeping unity is bulwark. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. And uh, and one of the challenges of leadership, and this one, and parents feel it, pastors feel it, business leaders feel it, is there are those moments when you have to make decisions that are not going to make everyone happy. Yeah. And you have to be able to live with that as a leader. And that's that's not easy, you know, because it, the, there are two things that Paul said, the, this specialist of living in Middle Earth. If Paul didn't know how to live in Middle Earth of life, he would never have been able to build so many churches among so many different units of people. You see it. I was I was listening to, to the last part of the book of Acts today, where he's trying to negotiate between the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Romans, and he's sharing Jesus in the middle of all all of it and his life is at risk and he's in and out of prison but he, but I'm so grateful that he was willing to go in those places and to be in the middle ground and to stand for God and to represent him but but to endeavor to to love people you know all, all the while and that's it I mean it comes back to love mm-hmm. to me in the kingdom of God the slam dunk is when we love people but sometimes love is painful Sometimes to let them keep on the way they are sure. and not confront them, that's that hurts them yeah. more than helps them. So getting into um, kind of like the last part, the practicalities, um, somebody who's listening that's experiencing um, the leadership squeeze, what are some things that we can be doing uh, to lessen that? And then what are some things that Emerge offers if somebody's listening and going, I, I don't have the tools. What yeah. do I need? Yeah. You know, when it comes to personally what you're able to do, maybe even in this moment to help your soul, two things I would say. One, look at your to-do list again and see, do I have at the beginning of my day time to be with God? You know, your soul is the the part of you. It, you know, uh, Alice Willard said, your soul is mission control. Mm-hmm. It's that center of who you are, but it's that part of you that really God draws toward himself. Jesus came to save your soul. What shall it profit a person if they gain the whole world and lose their soul? So take time to, to pray, to meditate on God. That becomes like a mental shock absorber for you in the rest of your life. Take that time. We know that not only spiritually, we know from uh, from empirical studies that people that get quiet and meditate are healthier. And then the other one, be careful about your expectations. Uh, be realistic about them. That's good. Uh, the stress in our lives is the distance between our expectations and our reality. The only way to reduce the stress is to either change your reality and would to God that if you're praying about something that it will, but until it does, you have to adjust your expectations. And the meeting point is called contentment. And we need that in our our hearts. So, so those are those are some of the things that we can do for ourselves. Emerge is helping people through Middle Earth all the time, the Middle Earth of life, marriage, conflict at home, decisions and vocations, all of that. And we do it through a number of ways. One, we do it through these uh, soul care intensives that we do with the leaders for three days that come from all over the country. And we do those. And you can go to our website and learn more about it. It's incredible. Matt, you've done a number of those. Mm -hmm. We hear wonderful stories of how leaders leaders are helped. I just had a person uh, in Tennessee come to me and said, I did one of those uh, a year ago. Nice. And it, and they went home. And a few weeks later, a tornado hit their home. Oh, and she said, something happened in that session that touched my soul in a way that helped me get through that problem. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I would have been able to get through without it. Uh, counseling, 
we we offer that at an emerge you can go to our website and we're developing new tools that we believe are going to be available to more people in more places that's good so with somebody who's listening right now um kind of in in wrapping this up what what other things do you feel like we need to know as far as the leadership squeeze anything else you want the audience to be aware of or anything else on your heart yeah you know most of you or many of you that are listening are part of a local church and you know i would encourage you as someone who has been a pastor pray for your pastor look for ways to affirm and encourage them the secret world of pastors can often become very isolated and they can become very overwhelmed in a recent study done by the the hartford institute for religion research um, more than four in ten clergy surveyed had seriously considered leaving their congregations since 2020 yeah. some of them have said if i legitimately know what else i would do i would leave and uh, a tenth of clergy report having these thoughts it's very often and there are high rates of collective trauma among clergy members when i pastored i remember there being two or three people that every week praying for you pastor mm -hmm. uh and, and just looking for ways i remember one man from barbados would look at me and say we're gonna make it pastor and much of my ministry with him he gave far more than he ever required. Lift the soul of your leader, lift the soul of your pastor, and you'll lift the soul of your church and your organization. It's good. I would encourage people to uh, be reminded uh, this podcast is coming out in October. It is also Pastor Appreciation Month. This is yes. a not that we shouldn't appreciate them all year long, <laughs> right. but this is a great time to kind of do something a little extra mm -hmm. and yes. and show them that because it is it, it's a, there's a heavy weight mm -hmm. uh, to leadership. There's a squeeze yes uh, to that. Well, Dr. Crosby, thank you so much for this topic. Thanks for your time today, and mm -hmm. um, just really appreciate getting together with you and, and having these conversations and. I I would have these conversations with you in a coffee shop. We we, right. we just happen to turn mics on <laughs> and, That's right. and, 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 That's right. and record them. So thank you so much. Well, appreciate all you do, Matt. And this conversation, as you said, is indicative of conversations that go on all, all the time at Emerge. And just know that you, you have a place that uh, cares for you, prays for you, and we're here for you. Thank you, Dr. Crosby, for sharing with our audience and taking the time to give us a lot to chew on regarding the pressures and the squeeze of leadership. Many of you, or probably all of you in one area or another, lead in life and know the pressures that come with it. I hope this series on different aspects of leadership is a blessing to you. Remember to share these podcasts with your network or those who might benefit from these topics. Check out Emerge.org for more info. And please feel free to leave us a comment or rate us with five stars. Well, until next time, or when our Savior comes, God bless.